And Wilbur is probably maybe over 200 pounds. And people buy these potbelly pigs thinking they're gonna be tiny and cute and you can carry them around in your purse, but they don't do their research and realize they're going to get over 200 pounds, most of them. So he's not a good house pet, but they are very smart and very trainable. And just most people get rid of them because they get so big. And this one came to us when he was six months old. And he was uh, in the backyard and the landlord saw him and said, you go or the pig goes. So the people had to make a decision to get rid of him. So Wilbur's a fixture here. This is our aviary where we have all of our birds and our sloth, our famous sloth that everybody knows lives in here, Mo. Hi, Mo. How are you today? So this is our most famous resident here at the farm, Mo the sloth. And he's a very messy eater, so he's got lots of fruit pieces stuck on him right now. Mo is 12 years old. His name is Mo, short for molasses, because he's so slow. Sloths are very, very slow, lazy animals. They see upside down, so right now the way he's looking at you, he's seeing you right side up, because their brain processes the images upside down. That's so that when he's hanging in the tree, he doesn't have to use any extra energy to turn his head around. That's how lazy they are. So 12 years old, donated to us when he was five. The people that had him were moving and couldn't take him. And he was hand raised from a baby, so that's why he's so friendly and he's used to being handled. So I bring him out like this for the kids and people to enjoy. And we actually have people follow our Facebook, Facebook page from all over the country. And I've even had some people that are international travelers that have seen him and come to the farm to meet him. So they, they kind of plan their vacation around coming to the farm on open house day. So let's see, Mo is 20 pounds and they live 25 to 30 years. So we hope to have him for a long time. But unfortunately, the only bad thing about people seeing me holding him is everybody wants one. So I try to explain if you love them, leave them in the wild. They live in Central and South America in the rainforest. And also 25 to 30 years is an extremely long commitment. That's a long time and when you get an animal, it should be for life. So we have Mo and we take him to community events, rotary clubs, different events at the park, open house, library, schools. He gets invited everywhere. They're not inviting me, they're inviting Mo. <laughs> This is our turtle and tortoise habitat. And it's pretty muddy because we've had a lot of rain. But we've got six African spurred tortoises, which are the largest ones in here. They are, I call pet shop casualties because people buy them when they're cute and tiny and they don't do their research and see that they're gonna get 200 pounds and they live 80 to 100 years. So we have six of these and they do fight. So I have to keep them in separate habitats. Otherwise they'll try to kill each other. So turtles are in the pond, tortoises are the ones walking around. I've got a gopher tortoise, which is an endangered species, a redfoot tortoise, and the big one trying to push through is one of the African spurred tortoises. And there's a redfoot stuck underneath him. So he's like a big bulldozer. He kind of goes anywhere he wants to go. But they're amazing tortoises, and they have a personality, and the people that get them usually enjoy them. But once they get too big, they this used to be all grass. They literally destroy your yard. So that's usually why people get rid of them. They're too big to handle. Then we've got alligators. This little guy's actually sitting out here for us. This is Boots the alligator, and uh, I take her out on open house days and let the kids hold her. And she was surrendered to our veterinarian by uh, a commercial business that had her in a tank and she had eaten the silicone lining from the inside of the aquarium that she was in and she was impacted so she couldn't digest her food so they took her to the vet to find out what was wrong. They didn't want to pay the vet bill because it was cheaper to get a new alligator. So they signed her over to the vet. The vet did the work for us for no charge and then donated her to us. And she was actually smaller than she, she is smaller than she should be for her age, but she'll start, she's put on weight since we've had her and she'll get to normal size. It's not gonna hinder her at all. They do get 15 feet long. So she's gonna get pretty big. <laughs> when they get too big, they go up to the Everglades Alligator Farm. They have a 200 acre pond there. And this is Irwin, he's our largest one. He's right there in the front of the pond. Sometimes he'll come out for us, there he is. He's about four feet long and when 
probably next year when he gets a little bit bigger he's going to go to the gator farm because I've got to be able to go in there and clean and handle and crate them if there's a hurricane for an evacuation so you can see this is a pretty large alligator and when he gets a, probably another foot long he's going to go up to the Everglades alligator farm and they will put him in the 200 acre pond and feed him and care for him there. So this is actually about three years, two, two to three years old. This is a small one and when they hatch they're about the size of a silver dollar and they're the fastest growing of all the tortoises so that's why people buy them. You can't buy them at pet shops anymore because the pet shops realize that they're, you know, people are just giving them away when they get too big, so there are too many of them. But a lot of people get them from people that they know that have them and breed them and have babies. So this one was found wandering at the Navy base, and I imagine a military family might have been moving away and just let it go because nobody came to claim it. This is our largest African spurred tortoise. His name's Fat Albert. He's been here, I've been here 10 years. He was here before I got here. So he's one of the original ones that, um, one of the first animals that was here. He's probably 70, 75 years old. He's 150 pounds. And he's the largest African spurred tortoise, so he has free range of the property. So he goes anywhere he wants. And like I was saying earlier, they do fight. So that's why none of the other ones have free range, because he is very territorial and he does tend to fight with any other ones. Then I've got a red-tailed boa. I have lots of snakes that people surrender because they get too big. And this one came from the Key West High School science class. The teacher retired, so they didn't want it anymore. This is Frankie, a bearded dragon. And he also was surrendered to the SPCA. So they call me a lot. They get the dogs and cats, but they also get some exotic animals. And when they have something that they think would be good for me, they give me a call. So Frankie's a bearded dragon. And again, another good lizard to have as a pet if you are a reptile person, because that's as big as it gets. And they eat insects, so they're pretty easy to care for. This, on the other hand, that's our 14 foot long Burmese python. That's what we're having problems with in the Everglades. And then just recently they found three young ones in Key Largo that they think were hatched there. So these are bad news. This one came from a breeder years ago. It was too big. It was probably 10 feet when we got it and they didn't want it anymore. So now these have to be, if you have them, you're grandfathered in, but they have to be microchipped and you have to renew your registration every year. That way they can keep track of who's got them and where they are so that we don't have them getting loose and dump, being dumped in more, you know, being dumped in the Keys or in the Everglades. So I take her to a lot of in, uh, invasive species talks, like the Rotary Clubs and things that want to learn more about it. I'll take her, she's real easy to handle, and I'll take her and teach people about her. This is our next upcoming invasive species that we're having problems with in the Keys. You'll find these more up in the northern upper Keys right now. It's a black and white tegu. And these are eating eggs in the crocodile refuge right now. They don't just eat flowers and leaves and lettuce and grass like our green iguanas. These actually eat eggs and small mammals and small birds. So the crocodile lake refuge, uh, crocodiles are a critically endangered species and they're getting in the crocodile nests and actually eating the eggs. So this is bad because they're harming the the growth of an, of an endangered species that we're trying to you know, bring off the endangered list. So black and white tegu, it's a monitor lizard and they're from South America and people buy them as pets and then again they're, they're letting them go or they're getting away. This one was found in Key West just roaming around so we think it was somebody's pet that got away but nobody claimed it. We get animals from lots of unusual sources. This is our prairie dog habitat which is one of our newest exhibits and the kids love it. You can come right up to the glass and see the prairie dogs in here. We've got four. They're all around right now doing different things. <laughs> and the inmates do all the construction for me. So sometimes I have some that that's what they do on the outside. They might do plumbing or they might be a contractor or they might you know, build cabinets or things like that. So they have skills that they're happy to use on the farm and then they can bring their kids and say, look, I did that. <laughs> Domino the goat, because <laughs> he sleeps in his feed bowl after he eats breakfast. Domino was a goat that somebody had bought to raise for, for goat meat and they fell in love with him and they couldn't do it, so they donated him to us. We get that a lot with uh, goats and the pigs. Then this is Kramer the emu. Hi, Kramer. And emus tend to be a lot friendlier than ostriches, a lot smaller, a lot less aggressive. 
And this one doesn't have a sad story like a lot of our other animals. He actually came from an emu farm in central Florida. They heard about us. They raise them just for petting zoos. And they heard about us and called and said, can we put your name on an egg? So literally, they put our name on an egg. And when he hatched, I got him four days later. So he is eight years old now, and we hand raised him from a baby. His name's Kramer, like Kramer on Seinfeld, because he's crazy looking like Kramer. And he's very, very friendly. When I go in there, if I scratch his back, he'll actually lay on the ground. Um, he loves to be sh hosed off and showered off. So these are from Australia. And I get to teach the kids about the difference between emus and ostriches when I, when I give my tours. All right, so then we have Patagonian cavies. This is another exotic animal. They are from Patagonia, South America. And people buy these, again, as exotic pets. They're not cuddly. They really don't like to be handled. And they were here when I came to the farm originally, so they've been here a long time. And they, they don't do a whole lot. So we kind of just go in and out, clean their cage, and feed them, but we don't try to handle them. So those are the Patagonian cavies. They're actually second largest rodent in the world. They're second to the capybara. So that's a big rat, essentially. This is our, one of our newest additions. It's a minor bird, and she is named Violet, and Violet was donated to us from an owner surrender to the Wildlife Center. And she's about, she's about three months old, so she hasn't learned how to talk yet, but she will probably have a pretty good vocabulary once she learns to talk and, and say her name. So we just set up this new habitat for her, and she's doing really well. This, the minor bird is actually one of three birds in the world's 100 most invasive species. So this is an, a bird that it eats everything, it's omnivorous. It eats, you know, small, it can eat little mice, it can eat um, worms, it can eat trash. So it can find a niche almost anywhere. So Australia especially is having a huge problem with the minor bird. These are native to India. So that's Violet. Hi, Violet and she seems to really enjoy her, her big cage and some area to fly. I can't put her in the aviary with the other birds because they eat other birds. So that is why she has to be housed separately. Over here we have hedgehogs. We just received this hedgehog yesterday, so I haven't put her in with the other hedgehog yet because I wanted to have, since I had open house yesterday, I was really busy and I wanted to have time to handle her and work with her a little bit, but we get hedgehogs every now and then because they're nocturnal. This is an African pygmy hedgehog, and they sleep during the day, so the kids that get them don't really play with them very much because they're sleeping a lot, and that's why we got this one. The mom said, the kids don't play with it, so we're gonna give it to you so that it gets more attention. So her name is Sonic, and all the kids identify with Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> from the, the cartoons and video games. But they're from Africa and they eat insects, so they're pretty easy to care for, but they tend to get fat if you don't give them a lot of room. A lot of them, people have them just in a little, hi there, in a little 10 gallon aquarium, and they do get heavy because they don't get enough exercise. So we've got a nice big area where he runs around, or she does, and then we've got a wheel that they run on the wheel like a hamster to, to run off some of their energy. So that's Sonic. And then the uh, other one's name is Chi-Chi, and I'll probably introduce Chi-Chi later today when I have time just to make sure they get along well. All right, Sonic, thank you. This is Chanel the skunk. Hi, Chanel. Come on, pretty girl. <laughs> she's actually doing her defensive posturing. So she can't spray. She's actually been descented. So she is very friendly. She's one of the favorite of the kids. And she loves to be handled and petted. She was actually living in the house with the people that had her. She slept in the bed with them. And she had a really good home. I often hate to take animals that I know have a good life, but the landlord wouldn't let them have her. So they gave her to us and they follow her on Facebook and they see that she goes around to different events and gets to spend time with the kids. So they like that. They're prone to diabetes, so you have to be real careful not to feed them a lot of sweet foods like fruit. So she try, we try to feed her a lot of vegetables. She likes cauliflower and broccoli, and she eats insects also. She has these really long claws that they would normally use in the wild to dig for the insects. So she likes to eat crickets and worms also. You're a good girl, Chanel. And her name's Chanel, which is pretty cool. I think that's a great name. 
So Chanel's a, a very popular one here at the farm. All right, Chanel, thank you. Joey came to us as a, uh, here he's waking up a little. He came from the Wildlife Center and, hi Joey. He was found with a bell and a collar and he was crawl, crawling up a fence in Stock Island. So they felt like since he, somebody tried to make him into a pet, they didn't want to release him back into the wild. So he came to us and it's pretty amazing. I don't normally take animals that are native to the Keys that we just find around here, but since he was, um, tried, they tried to make him into a pet, we didn't want to put him out there where he was going to get injured or somebody would hit him with a car or something. So he is a good animal for me to teach people about possums because a lot of people are real scared of them and they don't tend to be aggressive unless you're trying to do something to them. So as long as you leave them alone, they're going to leave you alone. They're also the only marsupial in North America. So this is the only pouched mammal that carries its babies in a pouch that we have here in North America. And they're also one of the shortest lived of all the mammals. They only live one to two years. So he's lost most of his teeth and he has cataracts in his eyes and he's probably a little over two. He's going on three years now. So he's pretty old. So every day I kind of look in at Joey and make sure he's still breathing. That's Joey. A po baby possum is called a Joey, just like a baby kangaroo. So that's why we named him Joey. Just like with the goat that somebody was raising for food, these big wild pigs, which are the pigs that come from the mainland, the Okeechobee area, if you hear of people that hunt wild boar, this is what they're hunting. This is Babe closest to me, that's Bandit, and then Piglet is over there. And people get them when they're tiny, and they raise them for barbecues, but they fall in love with them because pigs are very, very smart. And so they can actually, they actually are very trainable. They're smarter than dogs. They're the fourth smartest of all the mammals. And so people get very attached to them. Babe was gonna be the holiday pig roast, but the, she uh, was trained with the family dog to sit for treats and everything. So they just fell in love with her and they couldn't do it. Bandit was found while somebody was out boar hunting around Okeechobee and his mom had been killed and they brought him home to raise him and they were going to take him back and release him but once they've imprinted on people you can't release them so that's how he got Bandit and Piglet was another one that was going to be somebody's um, holiday feast and they couldn't do it so he got Piglet as well. Then we have a lot of geese and ducks out here and if you read anything about the start of the farm it started with the ducks crossing College Road from the golf course getting hit by cars these obviously aren't the original ducks, but we keep ducks to kind of continue telling the story about how the farm started to uh, round up the ducks to keep them from getting hit by the cars. Hi, that's Gabby. Hi, Gabby. This is Kelsey the lemur. She's kind of tucked under here hiding. And Kelsey's a ring-tailed lemur. They're native to the island of Madagascar, so all the kids know, I like to move it, move it. You know, that's King Julian from the movie is, is what they know. Unfortunately, people do buy these as exotic pets. They, are, they tend to be very aggressive as they get older, and that's what happened with her. She started biting, so the people didn't want her anymore, and donated her to us. And I'm the only one that goes in the cage with her. She is very aggressive, and they're in the primate family or monkey family, so that means they're very, very intelligent. So I try to keep new toys in here for her. I go in and I give her new things to play with so that her mind is always engaged. Hi, Kelsey. Pretty girl. She's looking around. Oh my goodness, what are you doing over here? <laughs> She's trying to keep her babies away from everybody else. Hi, Oliver. All of our animals on the farm are spayed or neutered if they can be. Occasionally we have a duck hide somewhere, some eggs that we can't find because we usually take the eggs. We don't want, we're not here to breed more animals. We're here to take animals that need a home. So that's an example of a duck that was smarter than we were. She found a spot and hatched her eggs and those look like they're only a couple days old. Then I've got some more big lizards, a couple monitor lizards in here. These are about five feet long and these also eat meat. This is a, from Australia. This is called a Gould's monitor. And this one's from Africa. This is called a black-throated monitor. Somebody bought them as pets and raised them, didn't want them anymore, and gave them to us. And typically, you would not want to mix species from different continents. But since they were raised together, we've kept them together. And they eat rats. So we, we buy frozen rats for the snakes and the lizards. And I feed them every, usually Monday. So today is feeding day, and they know it. 
That's, they're looking for you to feed them. <laughs> These are pretty intelligent and trainable. You can get them to walk on a leash and to sit up. It's, it's pretty amazing. Then the ferrets, same thing, pet shop. Pets, people get them. There's one in that little red octopus over there. You can just see its face and there's one in the hammock. They, um, usually people are moving to a new apartment and the landlord won't let them have pets. So that's typically how we get the ferrets, but they're really fun and playful. So I usually bring, especially that when you're filming Tatiana, I bring her out for the kids to play with on open house Sundays. They have a smell though, and that's the thing. I wouldn't want my house to smell like that. They have a very musky smell. And no matter how much you bathe them, you just can't get rid of that smell. So some people love it, but I wouldn't want my house to smell like that all the time. <laughs> the female and the male. The male would typically have a long, beautiful tail that it would put up and show off, but they molt twice a year and completely lose all their feathers. So he's not very pretty right now. He's kind of ratty looking because it is molting season. So by December, he will have a beautiful, all grown out tail. So goats. And there's a chicken over there that was donated to us. Somebody found when it was about two weeks old and it usually hangs out with the pigs and sleeps with the pigs at night. Shadow and his sister Sophie, the brown goat over there, were brought in from downtown Key West and you can't have farm animals in the city, so they were taken, confiscated. And then Maggie Mae was somebody's pet that lived in the house up in Big Coppet or Cudjo and the lady was terminally ill, so she wanted Maggie Mae to have a home before she passed. And this is Stella, she's a pot belly pig. Again, people buy them when they're cute and tiny, and when they get 100 something pounds, they don't want them anymore. This one was found running free on Big Pine, and she doesn't really like people, she gets very nervous, and so um, we work with her a lot to get her to understand that people aren't, aren't gonna harm her, but she still doesn't really like to be petted. Most of the pigs here love to be petted and love the belly rub, like Olivia here. Hello, Olivia. So Olivia was what was called a teacup mini pig. I can assure you there's no such thing, but because the pet shops label it as that, of course you want a teacup mini pig. And teacup mini pigs usually get 120 to 150 pounds, and you can see Olivia is much larger than any teacup. So I always encourage people to do their research before they get an animal because it's kind of an impulse buy. You see this adorable little piggy in the pet shop and buy it and take it home and then find out it was not a good idea. So unfortunately a lot of these end up in rescues and they live 20 to 25 years. So it takes a long time for a spot to open up. I have my limit on pigs right now so I get a lot of calls for pot belly pigs that I have to turn down because these are gonna be here a while. Then we'll go down here and see our bull. So this is Angus in this stall. Angus is a steer, which is a castrated male. I always say bull because a lot of times the kids have no idea and also they don't really know what a bull is so sometimes I have to say it's a boy cow. But Angus was brought in from the South Florida SPCA up in Homestead, which is where I get a lot of my larger animals because they get a lot of surrenders and a lot of illegal slaughterhouses shut down up there so they have lots and lots of animals up on the mainland that need homes. So I was looking for a bull or a cow because everybody said, it's a farm, you need a cow. And he came available, he was eight months old and he weighed probably about 80 pounds when we got him and they said he was a runt. So I figured, good, he won't get too big. Well, now he's 1,800 pounds and he is full grown, but he's definitely a handful. But he's a big love bug and he follows us around everywhere. And all the animals get time in the grazing yard every day. So when the pigs and goats are done and they go in, the donkeys and the bull go out. So everybody's got their time and you have to put them out with ones they get along with. This is Isabel. She's another pot belly pig. Have you seen a theme here? <laughs> Lots of pot belly pigs. She um, has a luxated patella on one of her back knees, which is basically a dislocated or genetic, genetic problem with her knee. So she doesn't walk as well, so the other two pigs pick on her. So she goes out first in the morning and gets to play by herself so that they don't pick on her. Then she comes in and takes a nap while they're out. So again, I have to see which ones get along because they don't all get along. So that's Isabel, and she loves her blanket. She's the only pig I'm able to give a blanket to that they don't tear it into shreds. Hi. So this is Eeyore. He came from an illegal slaughterhouse up in the Miami 
homestead area and the South Florida SPCA gave him to us just like the bull. So I keep in touch with them and if there's something that we can take that would work out for our situation, they've been here, they see what, they've seen my setup and they kind of know what I can take. And donkeys are desert animals, they're from the Sahara Desert originally, so they have very long ear hair and eyelashes to keep the sand out of their eyes and ears. And the reason their ears are so large is so they can hear each other across the desert. They can hear each other from about a mile away when they make their hee-haw noise. This is Dash. Dash came to us in January, again from the South Florida SPCA. And he was abandoned and he had been really badly sunburned on his ears because he's lighter colored. And he had no hair and, and bad scabs on his ears from being sunburned. And so they healed him up and donated him to us. And he's a miniature paint donkey. So this is Tucker the Kinkajou. And Tucker's about 12 years old. And I just woke him up, so he's kind of in a little trance right now because he sleeps during the day. All right, Tucker. And they're called honey bears because they have a six inch long tongue they use to get honey from the honeycomb. So occasionally if he yawns, you'll see this really long tongue. And they usually have claws, but his first owner declawed him, so he doesn't have his claws. So he has a little bit of a harder time when he jumps from place to place. Sometimes he'll fall off because he doesn't have the claws to hang on. They have a prehensile tail like a monkey, so he can actually use this, monkey, this tail like another leg to hang. And they live in the trees, and they're awake at night, so when you're in the rainforest, you can hear them calling at night. But here, during the day, he's usually in his crate sleeping. Hi, Tucker. And these will live about 25 years. So again, it is very, very cute, but I try to encourage people not to buy them as pets because they live a long time and most people can't make that type of commitment. So they end up in zoos and rescues. And we're always free, so we rely on donations. And we're open the second and fourth Sunday of each month from one to three.